This church in Sardis just embraced it. There was an, and if you notice, there was only a few people dressed in white. So it was the opposite of Thyatira. Where Thyatira had a lot of people who were dressed in white that had a bunch of people teaching something wrong. You flip this over. Now this church is morally bankrupt. False gospel. But there were just a few people who were still dressed in white. And what does it mean to be dressed in white? You're pure. You, there's no sin in your life. If, if, if the white was blotched or dirty, that would be considered the presence of, of sin. And understand, remember, we're, all, we're going to be struggling with sin for the rest of our life. Don't misunderstand me. But remember that key word, struggling. Once you're not struggling with sin and you're just embracing it, hey, this is what it is. We're sinners and, and we're just saved by grace and I'm just going to allow it to come inside of my life and do what I want. You will sooner or later be morally bankrupt. And the moment you become morally bankrupt, you grieve the Holy Spirit and he's now gone. He can't be there because you're rejecting the truth and you're living in this false gospel. And, and, may, you know, and I can't imagine how that may not be the thing that was actually going on here. And because of that, you lose the need for confession. Think about what happens when sin doesn't become an issue. You stop confessing. There's no need for repentance. The pursuit of holiness is not necessary. Why should I pursue holiness of heart, mind, and soul? Why should I do that? It doesn't really matter anymore. Sin is now gone. You don't even know what's right. You don't even know what's wrong anymore. And you're just going through the religious motions. Dangerous place to be. And, and we know, if you're a student of Scripture, that not only is that a dangerous place to be, don't be there. Is that make, is, no, it, we, we, Paul's letter to the Romans in chapter 8, verse 12, listen what he says. He says, therefore, brothers, we have an obligation. The therefore means because of everything that you just heard and because you understand that Christ, you know, paid the price for your sin on the cross so that you can be born again and you can be full of the Holy Spirit and you can walk with inside that grace. You now have this obligation. Simple. Because you came to Christ, you're now obligated. And that is to what? It says we have an obligation, but it is not a, to the sinful nature to live according to that. For if you live according to the sinful nature... You will die. That there's no life in it. To live according to the sinful nature means you're embracing it. It's just, this is good. And he says, if you do that, you will die. There's no life. You can't live. He says, but if by the Spirit, right, the Holy Spirit, that Jesus is the one that gives out to those that come to him in true faith and repentance, if by that Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. You will have life. Right? So you see the difference? So it's possible that these, this group stopped putting to death the misdeeds of the body. They forgot that they had an obligation to the Spirit and to live according to the Spirit's desires. And in that process, slowly and wittily, they end up spiritually dead, but they just have this reputation. And that's not a good place for them to be. Because sooner or later, Sooner or later, no matter how awesome Christ is, and Christ is awesome. Amen. And repentance and redemption is awesome. Amen. But sooner or later, for that to be a reality in our life, we must deal with the sin that is inside of our life. Even if it's one at a time. But to embrace it as if it's okay will always read, lead to little by little by little. Before you know it, you're just spiritually dead anymore. And how do you know if you're spiritually dead? You don't ever feel guilty about anything, like, like ever. <laughs> you know, like when I'm up here preaching and it's always about somebody else, you know, and it's not about you. Worry. Be concerned. That's what my, I say that. That's not my words. That's my pastor's words. Because I had a problem with this because I didn't think you could be full of the Holy Spirit and then why not be. So we were having this conversation and he said, well, you know, do you ever feel convicted about anything? Because the moment you don't feel convicted about anything, the moment you don't feel called to anything, not just convicted about, but called to something, the Holy Spirit's not talking to you. Why? Did he just choose to be silent or did you stop listening? And because you stopped listening, he just found other things to do if that makes any bit of sense. That's how he shared it to me. And that messed with my head in that car. I was silent for the next 30-minute drive. We were driving somewhere, and I was just wrestling with that. Oh, my. Lord, please don't let that ever happen to me. And don't let it ever that. Don't, 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 don't let it ever. 
Don't let that ever happen to you. Stay connected to that spirit. Feed that spirit. Embrace the Holy Spirit and, and, and invite him every day into your life and, and always look at the things that could be quenching the Holy Spirit and then deal with them as, as, as necessary. Amen? Is that just me right now? I got you all, all messed up now because you're all wondering if that's you. <laughs> Praise God.